And there you have it, an ultra high quality picture perfect training image data set covering all of the necessary angles, ready to synthesize into an ultra high quality LoRa model. So to build this ultra high quality training image data set, we're going to use Nano Banana Pro, which has just been released fairly recently. We're going to use this in combination with some prompts from my AI model genesis guide. You can get it for free in my Telegram, or you can just copy and paste exactly what I do in this video. I really don't care to be honest. And so we're gonna start with generating the base image, and then I'll show you what to do from there. Now, first thing you wanna do is establish an avatar for your model. This is important because I'm just assuming that you're gonna create a fan view or something for the model. And if you create a fan view, then you wanna generate traffic to the fan view. And in order to generate traffic with high conversion rate, you want to make sure that the avatar is tip top and consistent across all platforms. You want a model that just looks hot enough. It resonates better, all right? So anyway, I'll just cut to it. Generate your model avatar, and then we're gonna come up with a prompt to generate the base image. So for the base image, we're gonna go with something a little emo looking, 22 year old Caucasian woman. Now when we create the Laura model, you're gonna create using five different epochs. It's gonna generate five different versions of the Laura model. The lower epochs are gonna to tend to underfit the Laura model. The high epochs are gonna to tend to overfit. Now, because of this, you actually wanna go about 25 year old Caucasian woman. Because if you generate 22 and underfit, she end up looking like 16, 17, and we don't want that. So we're gonna say 25 year old Caucasian woman, jet black, just past shoulder length hair, blah, blah, blah. Subtle eyeliner, light freckles across nose. Professional portrait photograph, because the base image has to be just dead on, so it can get the face perfectly right. And you want the head and shoulders in the image so then the AI can work out roughly what the body type looks like. If you see the head and shoulders and you can tell she's thin, then it'll know to generate the rest of the body thin when you start creating the rest of the training image data set. Now these are prompts that I would normally use with something like Stable Diffusion, but for Gemini, because we're shortcutting that whole step, which is, just, which is massive, we're actually just gonna add something on the front of this. All right, so we just tweaked a little bit, make it hyper-realistic, image and AK resolution, etc. Then you're gonna go ahead and submit. All right. That didn't turn out well, so we'll just do one last tweak. Sweet, that's what we want. You want the base image to help be without makeup and all that, so then you can choose to have photos with or without makeup, but you start off generating from the base image without makeup, because you can add all the other stuff on. So we have our base image, so we're gonna go ahead and save that in the folder on the PC. Now we're going to scrap this conversation, or you just start a new chat either way. I'm gonna feed in that base image. And now we start doing our poses. So now for each of the training images, we're going to use a prompt similar to this. Hyper-realistic image, 4K, 1024 squared resolution, keeping exactly real face features, skin color, etc. I'm the woman in the photo, preserve my exact features, except showing me. And then we're gonna use each of the following poses that I show you. And you want a total of 30 training images. And then we're gonna narrow that down to 26 at the end. We're just gonna cut out the bad ones in case there are any bad ones, cut down to 26, just because everything that I've worked out for the Laura model, all the parameters and that have been configured for 26 training images exactly. Anything other than that, then something's gonna be off with the parameters, so you'll need to adjust accordingly. So we're gonna create 30 images. I'll show you different prompts to use. And then we're gonna filter down to 26 at the end. And then we're gonna remove the Gemini watermark from the image from each of them. And then once we've got our 30 images, we're gonna create a pod. Uh, I'll show you which pod to load up. And then we're gonna train our Laura and then I'll show you what to do with it after. So for our 30 images, we want eight front portrait images, shoulders up, etc. We wanna generate 10 three quarter angle images with the head turned slightly. Two profile images, that's just portrait, you know, professional photo, uh, professional portrait. Five upper body images showing the torso and above. Five misc environment angle images, hers in the cafe, whatever, in a bedroom, just random, random things, just so the Laura can learn. And then you're going to discard any rejects and choose best 26 images to keep, like I said, all right? So I'll show you different prompts to use for each one, but I won't make you sit through all of it. So for each of the eight front portrait images, you're just gonna copy and paste this little part here. So it will look something like this. And then we'll go ahead and submit. So it's gonna look something like this. So for each of the images, you're just gonna show the model. It pretty much looks the same, but just subtle differences. So you'll notice in this one, her teeth are slightly showing. 
That is because if your training image data set does not show the model's teeth in a consistent manner, the model's pupils in a consistent manner, if they vary over the training image data set, the, the colors change, the pupils change, then when it comes time to generate content for the model using that lower model, it's going to look really weird because it's just going to hallucinate trying to imagine what the teeth looks like that hasn't been trained on it. So by integrating all of this into the training image data set, that Laurel model is just going to be spot on. And when you go to generate content and NSFW content on services, then it's just going to look ultra realistic. This image will be saved as 001. And now we're going to do seven more of these profile images. And what I said earlier on, now for each one, you want to add something like this to the end of the prompt that we're using. So you already had the front portrait images that I showed you. And then for the profile, you're gonna use something like this. And then five off body images, you can do something like that. Risk environment images, as I said earlier. And all of those things that I just highlighted are gonna be added on to the end of here. So you're gonna keep this exact same prompt here and all the different changes, depending on different angles you want, you're just gonna to add to that, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so that's done. These are the portrait images. We have the model smiling, smirking, neutral expression, teeth showing, teeth not showing, hair up, hair down, hair behind the ears, looking straight, head slightly tilted. Those are the portrait images. Now we'll do the angle shots. So for the angle shots, we're gonna generate the first angle shot using a prompt, something like this. So you're turning left, showing me from the waist up, including stomach and chest. And then for the consecutive angle images, we're gonna do it below this one, just so that Gemini has already established what the model's torso looks like. Otherwise, if you keep regenerating the torso images just from the face alone, it could vary slightly with each image. So this way, Gemini knows the front on look, it is now established what the torso looks like, and then you generate all the consecutive angled images below this, similar to how we're doing the profile images. All right, so the angled images are done, model facing the right, hair down, subtle smile, neutral grin, facing the left, hair down, hair up, wearing white singlet, wearing same black bikini top, teeth showing, teeth not showing, different hairstyles, half the images her facing one way, half the images her facing the other way. Let's move on to the next one. Considering we're cutting down to 26 images, I'm gonna skip the two profile images because I already like the profile images that we have. I think they're coming out perfectly so far. So we're just gonna skip those. And then we'll go on to five upper body images. Now creating the five upper body images, we're gonna do similarly to what we've done with the past images that we're generating, where we're gonna use the similar prompt, except we're gonna reword it to show the top half of the body like this, except she's gonna be facing forward. So for the upper body images, we're actually gonna use a prompt like this one here. It is literally just the prompt above, except we've reworded it to show full torso on view while she's facing the camera. So we're gonna actually get that prompt, go up to this prompt, edit it, just replacing it with our new one, and then go update. So this is what we've got here. Yeah, I'm aware she looks really dull, but we're gonna get a whole lot of different images for the training image data set. Some she's gonna look more attractive than others in the other, but it doesn't matter because we're creating a law model to show all sides of her. We'll get her looking hot later on. So we'll go ahead and generate these five upper body images using similar prompt above. Torso images are done. So we've got them here, 18 through to 22 wearing white singlet, same black bikini top, hair up, hair down, teeth showing, teeth not showing. And that's it, now we'll move on to the next one. So we've got 22 training images so far, so we're gonna generate four more. They're gonna be four miscellaneous environmental angle images, which means the model's gonna have full body in shot, showing her different things. Laying on a bed, sitting on a chair in a bedroom, sitting in a cafe, miscellaneous shots showing the model's full body in view. And then we're gonna make up the magic number of 26 images. So we'll just get to that now. So to do that, we're gonna start off by attacking this part of the prompt onto our existing prompt. Now in Gemini, we can either start a brand new conversation with one of the images that we have currently in our training image data set folder, or we can continue on here and we'll just skip to the last prompt that we did. We'll get that part that we just copied and what we'll do is We'll remove this, tack it onto here, but we're just gonna reword it so it looks a bit better in here. There we go, kicking off with our first one. Here's the prompt that we landed on. We ended up with this, showing me sitting in a bedroom chair, neutral expression, legs crossed, entire body in frame. So this will be one of the four images we're gonna save. And then for each of the three remaining, we're gonna slightly alter this to show seen in a cafe, wearing shorts, wearing a skirt, showing teeth, not showing teeth, etc. 
So we'll do that now. All right, so now we've got the miscellaneous environment images here, 23 through to 26, facing the camera on a chair, laying on a bed, feet, legs in view, the chair one, which I showed you earlier, and then laying on the side, wearing that same bikini. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the Gemini watermarks from the corner of the images. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. There's much easier ways to do this, but if you wanna do it all manually, you can use Photoshop. Simply just highlight the area, right click, generative fill, just write background, hit enter. We're just going to quickly merge these two layers together. And then you also want to make sure that each image in the data set is the exact same size and spec. So we're going to make sure that this is 300 and then pixels are 1024. So each of the 26 images is going to be these exact same specs with the watermark removed. And then we're just going to re-save it as the same name. Obviously deleting the original one. And there you have it, an ultra high quality picture perfect training image data set covering all of the necessary angles, ready to synthesize into an ultra high quality LoRa model. In the next video, I'll show you how to set up a pod or even run it locally to train this LoRa model with the exact parameters and then show you how to feed it into the right service or stable diffusion so you can generate unlimited content, including NSFW content, which Gemini cannot do.